In this demonstration, you will learn how to use HFSS 3D Layout to assign a solution setup for a cutout subdesign, simulate it, and then perform post-processing operations. Right-click on Analysis and add a solution setup. This dialog contains settings for initial mesh generation and adaptive refinement. For this model, we will set an adaptive frequency of 1 GHz. The HFSS solver will perform adaptive mesh refinement at this frequency to guarantee the specified level of accuracy. Leave the remaining settings at their default values and click OK. This will then open the Edit Frequency Sweep dialog box. Set an interpolating sweep up from 0 to 5 GHz. For a faster solution, we'll deselect the Enforce Causality and Enforce Passivity options. Then right-click on Analysis and select Analyze to simulate the design. Now with the simulation running, right-click the HFSS setup and select Profile. Here you can find a wealth of information about the ongoing simulation process, including the number of adaptive passes that have been run, the mesh and matrix size, the memory and CPU usage, and what frequency points are being solved. Also look at the convergence profile. We can see that the adaptive refinement has reduced the change in the S-parameter values to within the requested 2% target after 6 passes. You can use the Matrix Data tab to inspect the S, Y, and Z parameters for the adaptive passes or the interpolating sweep. Now we'll assign differential pairs in order to plot differential S parameters. This is just a post-processing operation, so no new simulation is needed. Right-click on Excitations and select Differential Pairs from the shortcut menu. Add differential pairs for both the connector and the IC. This will create a new solution with differential network data. Right-click on Results and select Rectangular Plot. We'll look at the insertion loss and the return loss for the differential modes. So we're going to plot the quantities diff1,1 and diff2,1. Click New Report to generate the rectangular plot. You can see the expected effect of the DC blocking capacitors on the low frequency responses. Specific points on these traces can be probed using various marker types. An X marker, for instance, is used to probe all traces at once. We can create additional rectangular plots. These plots can also include user-defined quantities. For example, go to the output variables and enter the expression for the voltage standing wave ratio. You can visualize the finite element mesh from the simulation. Right-click on Field Overlay and select Plot Mesh for the last adaptive pass. You're prompted with a matrix of nets and layers. A mesh overlay on all the layers containing PCI Express nets can be selected by clicking on the relevant column headers. Click OK. A mesh plot at the adaptive frequency of 1 GHz is generated. To plot field solutions, you need to first tell the software to save the field data. We'll create a new frequency sweep as previously shown. This time, choose a discrete sweep and select Save Fields for 2 GHz. Now right-click on Field Overlay and select MagJSurf to plot the surface currents for Sweep 2. This time right-click and select All Signal Layers. Click OK to generate the current plot. The resulting current plot with a linear scale can be seen here. Sometimes it's helpful to change the plot to a logarithmic scale, as shown here, so that you can better see smaller magnitudes. This concludes our demonstration on how to assign solution setups, create frequency sweeps, generate reports, and create mesh and field plots in HFSS 3D layout.